Hello guys, welcome back. This is the fourth video in the, let's say, Olama series. I have already created three different videos. If you are new to Olama, please refer to these videos before. I have created before a simple chat UI where you can use the uh, chat GPT like interface, right? Using Olama and to use the models out of it. And then also how to use it with Langchain, right? This is the simple application I have used before. And now some of you mentioned in that video that can we use this to create a simple rag application right that is what we are going to achieve this by the way i have already created many videos where you can use the open source models to create the simple rag applications but they are you need to, let's say that this is provided by somebody else and there are so many code involved in it but if you want to have a simple pdf of rag applications then that is what we are going to do and as I said before also, we are going to use Olama and use the models to download with, uh, with Olama, Langchain, and then Chainlead to have the, let's say, deploying for the applications. And by the way, we are also going to use the Langsmith to have the traces of the applications. As you can see here, these are the traces. And then also we are going to use the Rag Prompt Mistral, which is already in the Langchain hub. There are many pieces here and there but you will have a clear understanding once we go through all these things. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the GitHub repository. I actually added this, this uh, content of today's video also in the existing one. I have already shown before a simple application, chat UI for running LLMs locally with, let's say, Olama and Langchain. I've added two different files here. So I'll show you two different ways. One, how to ingest the files already from a data folder and have the conversation with that PDF. And the next one is having simple chain lead application where you can upload the PDFs on the UI itself and have the conversation with it. All the instructions are here. What I did first is already clone this locally. So what you can also do is if you want to follow along with me, go here and just either choose HTTPS or SSH and then copy this, right? And then you can go to your terminal which I did already here. There is this lang chain Olama chain lead. And then I open this in the VS code. You can see I'm opening the VS code here and all the things are here, which you see in the GitHub. So this is the readme files. So you can just go through here. I'm saying here we'll be going through example one, two, three, but one is already done in my previous video. Please refer to that. Second and third is what we are going to do. So second one, first we will ingest the documents and then create a chain lead applications, right? So what is the step? Uh, this is what I said you, you need to clone, go inside that particular cloned repository and open it in any ID you want, but I have opened this in the VS code, right? And next thing is there is this .env. If I go inside this, this will be as example.env. Uh, I, I will rename that in the, in the GitHub. So this one, we don't need to have any paid versions of API calls, but we need to have, I will show you this because I'm going to delete this later. So you need to have this Lang Smith related things here. And if you are new to Lang Smith related things, I have already created three, four videos related to Lang Smith and how to get started with it. Please refer to that, right? So now if I go to the readme, the next thing you need to do is create a virtual environment, right? So you can just copy this, right click, copy. Let me open a terminal here. So I will just open a new terminal here. And first you, of course, I hope you have Python installed in your system. So if I go here and say maybe Python version, I have 3.11.0. This should work for your system also. I will do control V. What this, this does now is create a virtual environment and activate the virtual environment. As you can see here, there is .env here. And I have set up my terminal in such a way that once the virtual environment is created, it is shown something like this here, right? Now I have uh, virtual environment created and if you are new to virtual environment also I have created the productivity videos where you will know how to isolate the projects or packages so that it does not conflict with existing ones in your computer right and the next thing what we can do is we can just install the you know, packages right I will copy this what it is doing if you go to the requirements.txt here I have all the packages that is needed for this uh, particular project I will just go to the terminal and do control V so it will install all the necessary packages as it is say it's using the cast one because i have already tested this before and there is already the cast version of this it is installing but remember that it is installing in this particular virtual environment once that is done the example one you can just run this chain lead run simple chat ui so this is here simple chat ui this is the previous video content just go through this and have a simple 
chat interface right please follow the previous video for this one i will not go through this and okay it is setting the environment now now what i will do is first i will show you the example 2 let me actually clear the screen example 2 there is python 3 ingest file and the main file right i will just show you what is in the ingest file so here is the ingest.py here all the necessary things are being imported and this is the normal path things that i have created here and there is function called create vector database right so instructions are also mentioned here meaning that the data must be inside this data folder i have this cpt for all pdf what i'm doing here is initializing the loaders for different file formats but for this case it's just the pdf right so pdf loader i'm using the directory loader and passing the data all the pdf files and loader is pi pdf loader let me do control z okay and loaded documents is pdf loader dot load and that is loaded here and you can just uncomment this if you want to run step by step you can also do that and next what we will do is we'll do split the loaded document into chunks right we need to split that into chunks so we'll be using the recursive character splitter we said the chunk size 500 you can play around with these numbers and chunk overlap is 40 so that we have let's say in two different chunks some informations related to the previous one and yeah text splitter dot split documents and we pass this uh, loaded documents in the previous step there right so next as i said you will be using the olama but before running this olama and providing the model you need to have olama installed in your machine if you are new as i said you before also i have already created different videos in olama so please refer to that but if i if, you, if i just go to the terminal and run olama list it should show me some models as you see here mistral and lava i'm going to use the mistral so if this is running or showing here it knows that olama is here once this is done, you can uh, install the models that you want. I'm not going to make this video longer, but you can follow my previous videos. If you have these models downloaded, you can provide this in the Olama embeddings and the model name. The good part of using Olama embeddings or Olama is that if you maybe now have, let's say, Llama 2 installed, you can just provide Llama 2 here. And by default, actually, Llama 2 is being used, but you need to provide the one that you want to use. So quickly changing different models from the Olama website. This is the beauty of Olama, right? And now we will create a we create and persist a Chroma vector database, right? I'm going to use Chroma in this case. So this is normal things that I have been explaining many places. And after this, I said this persist so that it is being persisted here. It will be created a new DV folder because I have said here to create a DV folder. And yeah, once this is done, I will run this file. So how to run this now is just, you can go to the terminal, Python 3, and then you just say ingest.py. So it is going to do all the necessary things here. And once this is going through the steps, you will notice here a DB folder being created now here, right? Inside the DB folder, now it is just showing chroma.sqlite 3, but the process is ongoing. Once this is completed, you will see some other files also being shown here. This is still ongoing. So when this is ongoing, what is the next step we will be doing? We will be going through this main.py file. So if I go inside here, Again, here also the normal importing things are mentioned here. And I have also provided you link from the chain lead documentation where I have taken this, uh, this code. You can go through that normal things here. I want to use from the persistent DB. And as I said to you before, I'm going to use the hop, right? Um, Langchain hop. From there, you can pull the prompts. That's what I'm doing here. If you go back and I will show you here, here, this is the hop and I'm searching here for Mistral, and as you can see, this is the RLM portions user ID, and then this is the rag prompt Mistral. If I go inside this, so somebody has provided the prompt template for us, so we can just pull it like this and use in our existing code. So this is quite easier to make the code look better, right? I will go back to the VS Code, and now as you can see here, Python ingest.py is completed. So if I expand this DB, and there are many files here, right? Meaning that our embedding things is now completed and our knowledge base is ready right and we will go through this and we'll be using this rag prompt mistral and we will load the model here as you can see i'm using the olama mistral right and verbose trio and you can just provide the callback and return llm so this is the llm things and we have the retrieval qa chain just there is not that much of the things i need to explain here and there is the qa bot uh, which goes through that existing persistent db and get the information and here also you need to provide the same embedding model that you use to embed the particular pdf so yeah now we have the normal things this chain lead on start chat what it does is 
uh, it goes through the QA bot and it says, okay, starting the bot, just the normal uh, prompt things in the UI. And hello, welcome to chat with documents. You can just customize this. And this is just the normal on chat start. And once you have that, and this is the on message kind of, when you ask things, then it goes through this process. As you can see, it goes through the session and gets the session information. And yeah, just the normal things here. And also we want to have this source also printed along with this answer, right? So I, if, I, if you have followed my previous, let's say rag videos, then this is the normal things and you can just copy paste. And if you want to know more, you can go through step by step. So that's all. So now let's start this application, right? So I have already embedded things, I clear the screen. Now to run this, you need to run chain lead run main.py and you can pass dash w if you want to maybe have uh, something change in your code and update as it goes. I will just pass this one. You can just run any of these things. So it says created default config at this. So it is created by default things. And yeah, here is our simple chat UI. Now we can ask the questions related to that period, right? So maybe I will say here, what is the paper about, right? So now, as you can see, it is going through the retrieval QA. And when this is going in the UI, as you can see here in the terminal, there is already the answer being printed, right? And now we have the answer. The paper is about the introduction and release of open instruction tuned large language models and all the different things is being provided here. And if you want to know if it gets the information out of it or not, you can just go to the data, open the PDF file here, right? And then you can ask the question from here. Let me ask one question, by the way, we can just go through the PDF here. And what questions do we, do we want to ask from here? Let's say, let me see if it gives me the total cost. Okay, what is the total cost of creating the model? Something like this, right? So I will go to the application here. I will say, let's say what is cost to train the model. Let me say something like this, if it gets the answer or not. So here it already says down something. Okay, I'm unable to determine the total cost. Okay, this is how LLM works. And also because this is the local model, it depends upon your hardware requirements also. It sometimes gives the correct answer. Sometimes it does not give. Maybe you need to modify the prompt or be precise when asking the questions. For example, if we go to the PDF, let's, let me ask some, some other things. What can we ask from here? Okay, maybe something related here. What uh, What is the fine-tuned variant, right, of this CPT for all model? Let me say that. Let me ask here, on which model is GPT for all model, let's say dependent, something like this, right? Maybe, so here it says here, okay, GPT for all model is something, it, GPT for all model is dependent on the large scale data, trend, especially the data set of which GPT 3.5 Turbo model was distilled. It's important to note that GPT for all team does not train models, something, something. It shows the source also here. And GPT for all, it is giving us the um, GitHub of this model. And in the source two, we have all the sources here. Three, okay, it is getting the information from here. And the fourth one is here, okay. I'm not going to go in depth because it's just getting the information from these chunks, right? Now you get the idea, the right and wrong things is not what I want to show you, but you can just ask the questions from here locally without paying something, right? When you do some prototyping kind of things, this is really good. Or maybe also if you have good hardware resources and if you can tweak uh, the parameters or the prompt, you know, of course, why not? The local models can be also great. Now, let me cancel this, Control-C, and let me clear the screen. This is what we do, the ingestion part separately, and we ask the question, right? Let me close this one also. Now, let me go to the example three. What I'm doing in the example three, I have this rag.py file, and same things as before, but then we will be uploading the files on the UI itself. And by the way, many of you also mentioned in previous uh, videos, the code is not working or maybe some functions are not working because the reason for that is because Langchain as well as Chainlit are rapidly growing, right? And the code might be updated. Maybe the functions does not exist anymore, something like that, right? Best way to get the answers of those things is to go to the official GitHub repository and just create an issue so that if someone else also has faced the same issues that you have, they will provide you the answer. Of course, I will go through there and I will try to provide the answers if I have because I will be creating some video, let's say five months before and I will not be going through that video, right? But somebody else might have gone through that. So they might provide you good information before me, right? So just keep that in mind. And here, this is just the normal importing things as I did before also. 
And here there is the text splitter, again, recursive splitter. So song size now I'm providing 1000 and overlap is 100. As I said, it's the parameters that you can, you can just tweak. So on chat, so here I'm saying, please upload a PDF file and you can provide the max size 20 and the timeout 180 because some of you also mentioned how, how big of the file size it must be, right? So you can provide here. And yeah, and, and some of the things also, again, here also, because this code was working before and now it is not working and some of you also get the issue. So now I have fixed this in such a way that it just used the pypdf2 dot pdf reader and we need to pass the file dot path here and it works, right? Before there was the content things and now it shows that, okay, there is no content available anymore, something like that, right? So this is the normal things. We are reading the PDF files and again, uh, splitting into chunks and this is the metadata being created. Now we have the Chroma vector store similar as before and we have the chat message history also here right so that we can ask the follow-up questions as we go and yeah here is the creator chain that uses the chroma vector DB. i don't actually need to explain maybe now you know i'm using by the way chat olama here you can just uh, try around with this chat olama or olama just try it because this is the chat kind of things i i think if i provide chat olama it's also fine right but it depends upon your use case also and now here once our file is uploaded that means the embedding is done. It will say, okay, processing done. You can ask the questions. And now we have these, it is stored now in the sessions. And now we have on message kind of things. And yeah, the same things like before, but in different format, right? It, it just takes that particular chain before. And then we can ask the questions. It goes through the knowledge base and get the information out of it, the normal rag kind of things. So yeah, now let's run this. How to run this again, same as before, but now I will run chain lead run. And then it is rag.py. As I said you, we can just pass dash W or without this also. Let me run without this. I'm running all at one go now, right? As you can see here, now we have different looking UI. It says, please upload a PDF file to begin. I can just browse from here. Maybe upload the same GPT for all paper. I will go here. And it says processing GPT for all PDF because we have mentioned here to do that, right? Processing and the file that we uploaded dot name. And once the processing or the embedding part is done, it will so ask the message uh, that okay processing the file done you can ask the questions right let me go if it is already done so it's, it's still ongoing here so once that is done we can ask the question and by the way the good part of chain lead is also that when you ask the questions here you can just ask the history from here and ask the same questions here right processing this done you can now ask the questions now let me ask the same question that i asked before what is the paper about and i will just say here okay what is the paper about it is going through the knowledge base and then it will provide the answer for us. The paper is about GPT for all or whatever it provides, right? So here you can see the paper is about original GPT for all model and all the different things. And maybe again, if you go here, it will provide you the uh, sources from here. So it also depends because now I have the chunk size of 1000 and it has more information in one chunk. So maybe I see that it provides better answer on that also, it's it's up to you. You just go here and play around, okay, which number works the best, right? And now if I go here again, and maybe I will say, what is the total cost to train the model? Let me see if it provides answer here, because same PDF is being used here and there, right? What is the total cost of uh, to train the model? Okay, the text does not provide information. Okay, strange. I can say there is, can you source it for me? Just random things, it will understand this. If not also, you can just play around, as I said before also prompt. The main idea here is to show you how we, how you can achieve these things. Okay, the text does not provide any information, so it does not provide, let's say, in that way. So yeah, I'm not going to go through all the things again and then trying to get the right answer out of it, but you get the idea how to run this. And, and, and let's say that, now this is for PDF, right? You can go and go through the documentation in the chain lead or lang chain. There are many cookbooks there. Just try with CSV or try with normal text uh, document uh, or docs, Microsoft docs or any docs kind of things. So yeah, just play around with it and just practice. I think if you do that, then you will have a simple looking chat UI. But if you want to have the sophisticated one, let's say the private GPT and the QV are the best ones to go. If you want to have the ready-made solution from, from someone uh, who has spent lots of hours there, right? Okay, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed the video or if you find some useful information out of it, Please give thumbs up, you can share this or subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and see you in the next